advice. Thanks, Justin. For many decades, Australian households have been passive recipients of their electricity supply. In fact, passive recipients of their electricity bills. <laughs> so I'd like you to envisage another scenario where we own our electricity future. A scenario where we have a net zero effect on the electricity grid that surrounds us, that we consume just as much as we produce in our shire. A carbon neutral shire, at least on average. And I'd like you to envisage what this would do for us. It would create a big social glue for this community, a thing to work towards and to be united about and while we're doing that we can think about the implications the political economic and environmental implications of actually owning our own electricity industry we can do it it's the time we can do it the technology there and the knowledge is amongst us we just need the will the awareness the cooperation and an awful lot of time and effort. It will make us, as households in this area, investors in our future, in our electricity future, recipients of renewable energy services. We can be suppliers, we can be facilitators in the whole process, constructors. We can manage the, the industry when we establish it and maintain it. It'll become another growth industry for us. Now the numbers involved in this are fairly simple. The power deficit we need to generate to make ourselves electricity neutral is fairly simple. There's 5,300 households here and on average we use about one kilowatt of power all the time, 24 hours a day on average, which makes up 5.3 megawatts of power to make us electricity neutral. We can do this. The first option is the simple one. We can provide a lot of that by reducing the total amount needed by saving some energy that we use at the present time. For example, our water heating done by electricity is an optional fu function. We don't have to heat water by electricity. There's a simple thing called a solar collector that's been <coughs> around since pre-war times and become very effective these days. And everyone can have one. It would largely <coughs> eliminate one quarter of our consumption provided we added this community glue that enables everyone to easily afford it. We can add other efficiencies and conservation measures and probably because you're in Bellingen you've heard a lot about how we can save power. And there are many examples in our recent times. We can make a big effort on this with community awareness and support and in some cases in upfront finance to provide high efficiency appliances. And here's three examples in our neighbourhood where this has been done. Bellarana saves quite a lot of their power in the, in the um, aged care facility and they've got awards for it. The council has worked on a sustainability policy that's quite effective and the Neighbourhood Centre provides support for low-income families to become more efficient. We can do it as a community. What other options have we? We've still got a deficit to build up of perhaps three megawatts. What about we use some photovoltaics? 
if the numbers come out fairly easily, they're only rough numbers, but to get the three megawatts that's probably left to achieve uh, energy neutrality, we'd need 90,700 panels at around 20 million. So there might be some other options that are more practical. That might be part of the mix. Some PVs on the rooftops. We could try for exploiting the fact that we've got a, a rubbish tip, provide gasification of green waste called pyrolysis these days. The numbers are not really good. For one megawatt output, you need really a, a small collection of trucks bringing in one and a half tonnes of green waste per hour to feed it, and you need people there handling and sorting to make sure there's no impurities and to maintain it. It could be part of the mix, but it'd need some concerted key people in the community to work on this. We could try using that incredible resource we've got up in the plateau. Many times the ABC News shows that Dorigo has the best rainfall in the state. Whether people in Dorigo appreciate that or not is a different story. But they also have mountains. Mountains and rainfall together make a very good hydroelectric resource. And used in a micro-hydro method, a run of the, run of the river micro-hydro technology, the environment is preserved. Small microhydros up on the plateau, on the Bealstown Rocky Creek and Wild Cattle Creek, have been surveyed by an, a company up there. In 2009, a whole series of surveys were done, and a total of three megawatts was predicted to be available up there, simply from those creeks let alone the Nimboida. There's probably also opportunities of, of producing wind up on the Ebor <coughs> plateau. Certainly seems to me when I drive up there that there should be and the wind atlas of New South Wales says it's a very good area for wind power. Again, a community group working partially voluntarily could get together and do these studies. And there might be more options in the mix. All of these options are simply technical op options that need a community glue to stick them together. And there I look back on a past life in the 80s and 90s and noughties when <laughs> A group called APACE did a lot of community energy work in the Pacific and Southeast Asia, doing exactly what we're thinking about here. And for this, I've got to give extreme accolades to one woman, Donella, who ran APACE for 20 years on, a very intelligent and innovative woman who made APACE into what it was producing community energy projects in all of those areas that Justin mentioned, and particularly in Southeast Asia, in, in Pacific regions. And Donella, with the communities we work with, came up with a, a method of producing this community glue. It involved eight steps. Obviously, you need to have communities that want this to own their own energy system and are aware, aware of what it requires. So there's a step in community awareness involved where all of the Bellingen area here would have to be made aware of this idea. And there would have to be some method of asking people how do you see this? What do you see as your role? Do you see your, your role as an investor because you've got lots of money and very little time? Or do you see your role as a facilitator because you've got lots of time and no money? Or what? Maybe you'd be very 
keen to have renewable energy that you could use rather than spend money feeding the fossil fuel industry. You might be a recipient. How do you fit in? Where can we get a profile of this community from? We get it from asking people. Then a, a dedicated group could do a pre-feasibility study and look at all those options that I roughly did on a back of an envelope in the, the last few minutes there, and all the management op options. How could it be owned? How could we do the investment? Would it be by loans or shareholdings? All those options could come up. And how would we marry the microhydro or the wind power up on the plateau with the users down here? The feasibility study would be required, a, a costed design, and the investments could follow from that. The investments would need contracts so that people who, who were recipients could sign a contract and say, yes, I'd like it now and I'll pay back part of the savings in a revolving fund so the next person can have it. All sorts of contracts would be required and the, then we as a community would design and construct this thing and manage it. We'd have our own industry. So, do we want to do it? I think it's eminently possible. We can own our own future. We can get, get jobs out of it. We can get social glue. And I might add that there are 30 odd communities around this country who have actually done it or are working on it or are thinking about it like us. Thanks for your time.